Okay, this is going to be Slavery 3. It's going to be audio only, just a picture slapped up on the screen. Let's think through whether slavery is moral. I've already explained to you my own attitude is I don't believe in slavery, I hate the idea, and I absolutely hate the idea of owning people in heaven. Okay, so if ever I was going to have a, a Donnie Brook with God and become an atheist, it would be over this issue. That's my personal opinion. But let's forget about my personal opinion or your personal opinion. Let's just look at the facts. Question before the board. Is slavery moral? Right? But we first have to explain the different kinds of slavery to establish whether it is moral. The heart of morality is somebody thinking for, about the welfare, taking care of the welfare of somebody else. All of our laws about morality essentially deal with how we treat each other. I think that's a fair thing to say in any culture at any time. Forget religion. Morality has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with treating each other a certain way. Each culture has its own ideas about what constitutes moral treatment or moral standards that one should live up to. Okay? Obviously, historically, society has deemed it moral to have slavery at times and at other times has deemed it immoral. So let's look at what those conditions are. Okay? There are two kinds of slavery, essentially. Well, yeah, two basic kinds of slavery. The first kind is voluntary, which means that slavery really isn't slavery, but a contract between the owner and the person who's contracting to become a slave. Now, would it be moral to make such a contract? Ancient society held that whatever contract was between two parties, it was legal and binding between those two parties. It did, society did not rule on whether it was moral or right to make that kind of contract. Ancient society basically had a laissez-faire attitude about contracts. Today's society does not have that kind of attitude. In other words, in most countries of the world, you are not allowed to make a contract like this. I could not contract to be your slave and have that contract be legal and binding in, mo in most societies of the world today. There still are some societies where that contract can be made, notably in Islamic countries. Those kinds of contracts are upheld in Islamic countries. But pretty much everywhere else, you cannot legally contract yourself to be a slave, even if it's voluntary. Okay, so that's the difference between past morality ideas and today's morality ideas. Another difference in slavery is involuntary slavery. Involuntary slavery means that you are captured or taken and treated as a slave by the person who captured you. In ancient times, that was considered also to be a contract based on previous conditions that some societies in, ancient, in the ancient world honored and some didn't. For example, in most parts of the world, up until very recent times, if two parties, two countries, two city-states, two um, political entities went to war with each other, there was a long-established international law contract that the victor gets to divide the spoils 
and therefore take over everything that belongs to the vanquished, including enslaving its people. The victor had the right to kill the people, torture the people, rape the people, take all the goods, or put them in slavery. And that standard was pretty much all over the world for a long time. I mean, from time immemorial, essentially. Now, you can call that moral or not, but before every war that was ever fought, pretty much, the attacking party would warn the attacked party, Hi, we're going to come attack you. If we win, this is what we will do to you. And then the option was that the attacked party would negotiate terms of surrender that would ideally be better than, you know, just being killed or sold into slavery. Okay? That's why you have terms of surrender even today in modern warfare. This is where it all comes from. Is that moral or not? Well, sometimes yes, sometimes no, even by modern standards. So involuntary slavery generally meant that you were part of a town or a city-state or a nation or a group of people who were beaten in war by some other group of people and as a result you lost your freedom. And therefore you could be sold as any other kind of property like a cow. And that was your life for the rest of your life. Now on occasion, and this was true even in voluntary contracts, you could set up a deal where the slave would be working for X number of hours on a project or whatever, and that would earn money for the owner. And at the end of that project, the slave would be free. Or the slave would not only be free, but would be paid. He would be free and paid. It was called manumission. It was also a very common practice. And the reason why it was so common, and here's where you want to get into both sides of the morality question, is that the owner of a slave really didn't want to keep that slave for life. The longer he owned the slave, the more expensive it became. So oftentimes, slavery was renegotiated into a, an indentured servitude for just a short period ideally in the owner's mind it would be only for so many years while he was still healthy and then the slave owner would want to get rid of the slave and set him free so he wouldn't have the expense and in the Bible that story is often told in fact that's what happened with Jacob is that he worked he agreed to enslave himself to Laban for seven years in order to earn the dowry of Um, Laban's first daughter and then Laban tricked Jacob and ended up giving um, Jacob the the elder daughter instead so then Jacob had to work a second seven years and then Laban tricked him again and he ended up working a third seven years and according to the Bible God says okay that's enough go free and then Laban left and it's a long story very complicated but people contracted to, to become slaves for a, a given prize, for a given wage, for a given outcome. So you have to understand that this was a commercial idea. Even when it was in terms of involuntary slavery, it was a commercial idea. And very often the slave was set free, presumably because the owner didn't want the expense of having to take care of the slave in old age. Moral or immoral, this is how it was practiced. Now today, primarily because slavery was so expensive, we don't have slavery. You have to, again, there's a gray area here about morality and immorality. We don't have slavery today. Today, you go to an employer and you hire yourself out for an unspecified or a specified period for a specified wage which you are paid while you work and then at any point depending on the terms of your contract you can be fired or 
you can quit. Sometimes you have medical benefits, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you have a pension plan, which is what I do for a living, and sometimes you don't. So there are contracts of labor between the owner of the labor and the one who wants to use that labor for a specific price. Slavery was basically an employment contract in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Now, here's where it changes. Starting around, well, actually all the time in history, there was a third variation in the involuntary slavery definition that was practiced, where people would come upon a village, a raiding party, would come upon a village, they would capture everybody in the village, and then they would sell those people to somebody else maybe even far away. Okay? The Bible does not condone that form of slavery. In Exodus 21, which I showed you in Slavery Part 1 and Slavery Part 2, um, starting around verse 16, and just before it actually, does not condone that form of slavery, not now, not ever. Joseph was sold into slavery by Midianite traders who were Arabs. Arabs have always been slave traders. Okay. They sold Joseph into slavery in Egypt. You know that story even if you don't believe in it. You're familiar with it. They kidnapped Joseph. Joseph's own brothers, you know, made a contract with the Midianite traders to sell Joseph. They had no right to do that. And Joseph, being obedient to his brothers, stayed a slave. He did not, vi he did not run away. You know, the, the Bible goes into that, and I could tell lots more about that story, but I'm not going to right now. The point is, is that you can be kidnapped and turned into a slave. And that actually happened to me. Okay? It didn't last long enough, and I was rescued, but I know something about what I'm saying about being kidnapped for slavery. So, that practice continues today. And it continues primarily by Arabs today. All the stories that, you, that you've heard of about slavery in the early United States, that's the kidnapping variety, for the most part is that the Arabs would kidnap blacks or other blacks would kidnap blacks and they still do that today. And then they would be sold to whites who would then employ them on plantations in the south. And of course today it's elsewhere. There's a huge white slave trade that's going on and I, that would almost happen to me um, amongst the, the, you know, in East Asia and, of course, by the Arabs. It's practiced in the United States. It's practiced all over the world right now. It's done by kidnapping. And then what you do is you basically drug the slave or you shackle the slave, or more likely drug, make the person addicted to drugs so that they're dependent on you for those drugs in order to be a slave. And kidnapping slavery has been around forever and it is never condoned in the Bible, not once. And anybody who practices it and anybody who, um, you know, gives into it, you know, how do you want to call it, colludes, like the, the South did during the middle, you know, the, the late 1700s and middle 1800s, that's all wrong. And the debate in Parliament in the United Kingdom that was going on back then and the debate that went on in the United States back then and led to the Emancipation Proclamation was over this kind of slavery. That's, there's just, you know, you're, it's against your will. You're not in a battle that's a formal battle between you and another person in the war where there's no contract whatsoever, you're just working in your field or you're sitting in your house and somebody kidnaps you. That's a crime in every society that I've ever heard of. 
Now, you know, a lot of societies, they just let it go. But it's a serious problem in Latin America. Really serious problem. But it's a problem all over the world. Okay? So, the th- the, the you've got voluntary slavery, which is a contract voluntarily made by the person who chooses to be the slave and the slave owner. And then you got involuntary slavery, which itself is a, a kind of contract prior to a battle where the, the vanquished people agree that they have to become slaves if they lose the battle. And then there's a variant of involuntary slavery, which is a crime where a person is kidnapped into slavery and then the person is sold or used or abused, more likely abused, And then any third parties who are making use of that person who was kidnapped and sold, they're guilty also. Not just the person who did the kidnapping. And Exodus 21 is very clear that that's a crime. But then, so it's also true in, you know, pagan society as well. Has been for as long as I can remember. But it was sort of silently condoned and even today is silently condoned. There's a white slave trade that goes on. There's a black slave trade that goes on. There's an Arab slave trade that goes on. Everywhere in the world, there's especially an Asian slave trade that goes on in East Asia. It's really horrible. And the governments don't know how to combat it or they don't try to combat it very much. And it keeps on going on to this day. So now, I'm sorry it took me 17 minutes to clarify, those are the three kinds of slavery, really two with one subset. Voluntary, which is a contract, involuntary due to terms of war, and the subset of involuntary is kidnapping, which is always a crime. Now, I'm going to close with really just a question because this is for you to think out yourself. Are any of those ideas of slavery moral? Just the the idea. Are any of them moral? If so, when? That I'm going to leave you to figure out for yourself. Because I already stated my position at the beginning of this audio. Alright? Now we're going to flip, just for a few more minutes, we're going to flip over to... A sub-question within all those questions prior about slavery being moral to talk about, well, how is the slave treated? Like, let's say you were kidnapped. And at the time you were kidnapped, you were in a family, you were a minor. Because a lot of kidnapping is done to children. Let's say that you were a minor. You were like eight years old. Your father was a drug addict and your mother was a prostitute somewhere in East Asia. And you were a girl. You were eight years old. And your father was routinely sexually abusing you at night. One day you happen to go to market and you get lost and your mother's, you know, busy trying to get her next customer So you're wandering around in the fruit stalls and some other in, you know, East Asian kidnaps you, sells you into slavery in the United States. Pretend. It could be Europe. More likely Europe. Sells you into slavery in the United States and you're a young girl who's eight years old and the person buying you does not know that you've already been sexually abused and ostensibly um, sells you to be, you know, a, a, a slave girl. You know what that means. For some guy. All right? But instead of some guy buying you, some woman buys you, or it could be a guy, and instead of hurting you or abusing you sexually or otherwise, They not only treat you well, but they give you an education and all the rest of it. In other words, they paid for you all right, but then they rescue you and treat you like their own daughter. And they give you a better life than you would have had if you weren't captured and sold into slavery. So now what? 
is it moral or immoral? And then when you become 18 and reach the age of majority in most countries, you're a free person. You're not, you were never treated as a slave once you were bought. In fact, the person who paid the money paid the money so they could get you and rescue you. And then you were treated like royalty or, you know, a high person, a regular person, a free person, like their daughter. So in that second event, being so well treated, was the person who bought you actually committing an immoral act or did they rescue you? Kind of a tough question there, isn't it? It was involuntary slavery. The person buying you doesn't know where you came from, so can't reunite you with your parents. And maybe in this scenario we could posit that, that the person who's raising you like a daughter wants to help you find your parents. Of course, once you remember what your parents were like, do you really want to find them and burden them, since obviously they didn't take care of you the first time? Do you want to go back to an abusive father? See, the moral issues are really tangled, aren't they? And, you know, should the, the state prosecute the person who bought you, considering how you're being raised up and treated well, like a daughter? And that you go free when you're 18 anyway, which is the age of majority in most states. What are the legal issues involved there? Now, why did I bring this up? Because how you're treated by the person who allegedly buys you, illegally or legally, immorally or morally, by contract or involuntarily, how they treat you does affect the moral question, doesn't it? If you were bought as a slave by some, I don't know, somebody who was about to inherit, you know, a billion dollars and they didn't have any kids and their plan was really to adopt you as their own daughter or son and you inherit all that business from them, were they immoral to do that? That's the big heart of the issue with slavery here. How well are you treated, not just how did you become a slave? And I'm not trying to justify anything. I'm just trying to explain that you know, I'm, I got a legal frame of mind. I can argue both sides of the question as a lawyer. But as you can see, it's not clear cut. Which is right and which is wrong? Who's more moral? The argument of the Bible is hi, you chose to sin, and sin is harmful. It's not condemning you as a bad person. That's not the idea in the Bible. The idea in the Bible is that sin is a disease that you perpetuate by choosing it. And then it rules you. God can free you from that. Do you want him to do it? Then you're making the voluntary kind of slavery contract, which is, hi, God, I'm enslaved to sin. I don't want to be enslaved to sin. I'd rather be enslaved to you. Thank you very much. I believe your son paid for my sins. Okay, at that moment you are a slave to God forever. You can turn right around and go back to being an atheist if you want. It's not going to change what happened. Is that a moral contract or not? Now, of course, if you don't believe in God at all, you don't even believe that the contract exists, and you believe it's all flying spaghetti monster. Fine. My job is not to convince you that it's true. My job is just to explain it. Now, if you want more explanation, yell at me. Feel free to insult me or call me names. The only thing that I'll insult you for is bad scholarship, if you're not doing your homework or you're not thinking straight. But you can say anything and be as blunt to me as you like. And you can copy any video I want, and you will never be flagged by me. Peace out.